Hey, this is Big Guy DIY coming to you with another repair. This is just a, a tune up on a walk behind M MTD Pro mower. Uh, I don't think they, this has been tuned up for quite a few years. So, a buddy of mine gave me a call and asked if I could tune this up for him and do the basic tune up, sharpen the blades on it. Let's uh, turn the camera around and show you what I got. So as I said, this is the MTD Pro, the 48 inch uh, cut. Walk behind, Kawasaki motor, uh, single plug. Does it have an oil filter? Here's the model. Should you be interested in it or have a similar uh, model and you want to get parts for the engine? What we're going to do with this is we're going to change the uh, air filter. I'm going to go through this carb and clean it out, make sure it's cleaned up. Definitely change the oil filter as well as the oil and then the spark plug. And after all that's done, we're going to uh, lift it up. There's three blades here. So you can see the top of the spindles. And we're going to pull those blades off. Oh, and also change the inline fuel filter for this one. So let's get started. So for this motor, I already went out and bought parts. This is my spark plug model. This is my inline fuel. Now on here there's a, a, a frame. 4967 pH 4967 is a frame if you go to an automotive store but if you go to a um, power place you know what do you call it? not power place place you sell it get your mowers and stuff like that this is the correct fuel filter for this motor and then our air filter reason I say this is probably has not been tuned for quite a few years is the original air filter is metal they don't do metal anymore they haven't done that for quite a few years so into the trash with that can see how filthy this is it's actually caked on so we're gonna clean that off we're gonna be using carb cleaner to clean that off uh, I got a rubber gasket here let's see So this is one thing we want to clean off. I'm going to take this part off. We've got our two bolts right here to pull. And this whole intake will come off. So why don't we tackle that first. Now I already pulled the spark plug off. So I'm going to throw the new one in while I'm at it. anti seize dielectric crease. We're going to put that on the tip of the uh, spark plug. It just helps in the electrical connection for the plug and the wire. Now 
before I change this inline fuel filter, I already shut the gas off underneath the tank. Otherwise the fuel will keep running out. <laughs> Old. New. And when you install these, they are directional. Okay, there we go. See the word flow? So my gas is coming in this side first, exiting out on this side. Fuel line split here. Oh, I'm gonna actually change out his fuel line. Put in a new fuel line. It's uh, starting to dry rot on him. So what do you think? Needs a cleaning? Yep. So I'm gonna take this all apart. Give it a good cleaning. So first thing I'm gonna do is take this out and just wash it. I'm gonna stick a rag in both ends here, the back side and just wash this top half with a um, carb cleaner. This is what I use to clean the carburetor off. When you use this stuff, especially with the stem on it, you need to wear safety glasses. It's gonna splatter back into your eyes and this stuff will sting. So safety first. And my infamous cookie sheet. We're going to start by taking the bowl off. Now when I work on these, I don't touch the um, the mixing screws or the air screws. I just leave them in their stock form.
take is your needle your float so we're going to take out the uh rod here that holds the float if you're not able to push the axle out that's used here in the float you might have to hammer it out or punch it out This is a finish nail. I don't have a punch that's small enough. I'm hoping uh, this finish nail can get it to go. Well, that ain't good. I just broke the carb. So I'm buying a new carburetor. That can't be fixed. Well, that was interesting. Well, there you go. Not every uh, repair goes the way you want it. I guess we'll just continue taking this one apart. So here's our float. Here's our needle. Sits in there. You can see in the top of the needle here is a little spring. That would normally slide onto there. Side here, where our jetting is. Take the flathead screwdriver to remove it. That's all it is. Here's our jetting. brass piece that this slides into also comes out but it's like sealed itself inside and it what it does is that brass piece 
screws in from here and it sticks out screws in from here and sticks out of the car on the top here and that's where the gas would come out but it's just shot in there I can't get that thing to turn at all corroded so we're gonna come back to this with a new carburetor any numbers on here see those numbers three two three four nine u7 hang on that's my carburetor numbers right there I can't get the last two though I'll use a magnifying glass to read them. So I've ordered a new carburetor for this motor. So <clears throat> meanwhile, I reinstalled a, a new inline fuel filter, new fuel line, because the old one was starting to dry rot. Next, we're going to do the oil. We're going to use <coughs> this device. This is an oil extractor or fluid extractor. The way this works, you take the dipstick, stick it down, and then pump. I'm going to do two things with this. I'm going to let this extract the oil and then when it's all done, because I'm just curious how efficient this is extracting oil and then on the other side of the motor here <clears throat> is the oil drain plug. I'm going to open that up and see how much oil we actually got out. And when this is done sucking you'll see it uh, begin to show air coming through. Now I'm gonna take off the oil drain plug, which on this, it's on the bottom of the block for this motor, it's a brass plug. There is oil coming out, but it's a small drizzle. So I'm just gonna let it drizzle. Before you put the new oil filter on, dab a little oil around the O-ring. And only make it hand tight. There's your drain plug. So, reinstall the drain plug. And that's how much oil continue to drip off. So that's probably, I don't know, half a pint at least. So, even though the extractor there extracted probably half a pint. I had another pint to go in regards to oil. That's kind of somewhat disappointing. Doesn't get down as deep. This is the oil that we're putting in. SAE30 by Kawasaki. You can also use um, 5W30. Uh, I think. What did I see? 5W30. And I think that's it. Is if you don't have SAE30, you can do 5W30. Is your choice for this motor. Plug is done. Oil's done. Oil filter's done. Inline fuel filter's done. New hose. New carburetor's coming. Next, we're going to sharpen the blades. So I have to tilt this back. 
get this up in the air so I can get underneath. my blades I gotta take off I'm just gonna use a pneumatic air gun to zip these off Your drive shaft. Then bolt from the top. That's a first for me. And then it should unscrew. Oh, that's different. Usually you have either a nut or a bolt that would screw up into a drive shaft, not the entire drive shaft coming off. So let's look at this. We got a washer, spacer, another spacer. And then underneath here, I need a knife, another spacer, four spacers. So I'm going to put this into time lapse and uh, sharpen these up.
All right. Blades are reinstalled. You see the top nuts there. Hold them on. Next, on this, I thought I hit his grease certs. On here, there's a grease cert at almost every pulley. So you can see a grease cert there. Uh, right there. This one's here. That doesn't have it, that doesn't have it. But you got grease certs here in the front wheels. Grease cert there. And there's one on the opposite side. And back there in the drive shaft. And I know there's one on the other side because they saw it. So we're going to hit all those up next. And we should be done with uh, greasing this. Tire is off because it's not holding air. Show you why. The bead here is broken on the rim, so it's not holding. I can actually squeeze this and I can get air bubbles coming out. So, had to disassemble it. So all I did was I went out and bought this at an automotive store. I know it says for patches and plugs, but all I did was push down on the tire so I would separate it from the rim and put rubber cement all the way around on this side. as well as the back side. I separated the rim from this as well. And so this has held pressure now for four days. Uh, before, it would be flat within four days. So now I have to reinstall this. Uh, get this to sit. I gotta reinstall the drive and the brake part back on the wheel.
new carburetor came in. So I ordered this directly from a OEM part place. That's where I got it from. Now, just to reiterate, I'm replacing this of this arm here that supports the axle all right the axle is what holds the float now you get the idea it goes in like this it's, that's not repairable so junk the new carb came in because uh, I'm getting this straight from the manufacturer. I don't have to do any adjustments in regards to fuel air mixture. Um, cost of these carbs here by Kawasaki, um, I was seeing them as high as $280, but I kept shopping around. I was able to find this one for $176. And this is an OEM part, which I wanted to stick with. Uh, what makes this so expensive is one, this is a double butterfly carb. So this is kind of unusual. Uh, most of the time I will see carbs that are just a single butterfly on it. But this being a double butterfly, it's a little more uh, complex, I would say, in regards to its vacuum. Now it works. So let's install this in. When I disconnected my two arms, I go to the top part of the carb here. I left them in the alignment that they would attach, reattach to. There's no guesswork here. not replacing the gasket on the block because it's fine. Reattach my gasket on the outside here. New oil filter, now it's all plastic versus the old one which was metal.
he needs a new belt this is uh, a bit loose it is adjustable here but that's you do this adjustment after you put a new belt on not necessarily with an old belt I mean you put this over it's it's wearing out but the rest of the belts look fine this looks like a tractor supply belt because there are no markings on it where if you look at this belt that's an OEM belt so other than that basic tune-up runs great very happy so yeah any questions just rifle them below as I said this is a walk behind MTD Pro 1448 gear driven which means it has a shifter on the back side I think it's six speeds six speeds forward one speed reverse five speeds forward one speed reverse this was a uh, pretty simple but what was new to me was how the uh, blades come off I'm doing the nuts on the top so the entire shaft pulls out because it's not a nut on the bottom it is a bolt that goes straight up so any questions rifle them below uh, hopefully this answers some questions on how to do a very simple tune-up on a walk behind all right give me a thumbs up if this helped at all and uh have a great summer cutting grass see ya